could hear at every jolt the blood come gurgling from the froth corrupted lungs obscene as cancer bitter as the kind of vile incurable sores on innocent tongues my friend you would not tell with such high zest to children ardent for some desperate glory the old lie dulce et decorum est pro patria mori sweet and fitting it is to die for one's country after every war someone has to clean up things one has straightened themselves up after all those who knew what was going on here must make way for those who know little and finally as little as nothing from gray to green this is what our next guest Ludwig Janus brings to our attention connecting Second World War and now. Uh, you were born eh, on the 31st of August 1939, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, right. Right. So time passes, uh, and it was just one <laughs> year before the war, right? Yeah, yeah, some days before. <laughs> before. Yeah, so we'll start with that, uh, Ludwig. <laughs> and uh, can you can uh, you take us back to that time of um, in the Corona system? Uh, and uh, what was uh, the uh, the context, the uh, the cultural context? Uh, Uh, around that time of your conception, 1938-1939. Mm-hmm. Yeah, first I say thanks to you, Olga. It's, re- it's really a, a wonderful continuity in your engagement. We met in Greece and Uh, it was an explosive start at that time. <laughs> and you had always this global view. The view was not uh, possible to realize, but nowadays you have by internet the ability to do it. What you wanted in Athens, I remember. And we all thought, it is too big, it is too big. But nowadays you can realize it. it Also, congratulations to this. Thank you. Oh, thank you. Yeah, 39. Um, <clears throat> I was born before the war, and I was proud of this as a little boy. I thought, ich bin, I am peace work. Also, <laughs> uh, yeah. in the war, all materials went down in quality. But I, I, for me, I thought I am peace uh, quality. <laughs> And um, the first three years in Germany were not so not difficult. The, uh, from 43 to 45, it was very difficult. But in the first three years, my first three years, it was relatively comfortable. And uh, But the problems of the time burdened uh, the, pa- the relation of my parents. They came uh, divorced by this sort of separated. My father in war as a soldier, my mother private in Essen in the Ruhr district. And after the war, they were not able to come together. And what that was difficult for me because I had holded them in a, internally in me as my parents, my father, my. 
and um, <clears throat> uh, what you had the question, what makes uh, pioneers? <laughs> I would think great problems and great support. Also not too much uh, destructive problems, but great problems that can uh, boost uh, all the potentials in you. And uh, this um, being born in the wartime, uh, that was for me, it was clear that it could, it had to start anew. I uh, discussed it with the philosopher Peter Sloterdijk. Uh, he was also, he was born also after the, a uh, little time after the war. And he said it, it meant this Hitler horror meant it, it cannot f follow the, the old ways. We have, we have to start anew. And maybe uh, this is uh, part <laughs> of my life uh, to start a new, and that is also for, good for pioneer, to be a pioneer, that's all. Mm -hmm. And um, one aspect of my uh, birth, the pre-birth time was the disaster of the aims of my mother. She studied uh, jurisprudence as a law, and wanted to family justice. But at that time, the male professors in the university in Berlin had the idea, it is impossible that a woman can be, have a status as a lawyer or a, such a, in this field. It was in this time also in chirurgy, uh, surgery, it was impossible that there could be a, and uh, she was gifted, she was, uh, had, had power, but in the exam, she had a block and she uh, met the, the most, um, um, uh, as the enemy, as all women were enemy for this professors and he fight it against these women who wanted to come on the stage of the university. And, but she was, he had the bigger weapons, he could smash her. And that uh, changed her life. And um, I, as was a child, I, for me, a, a smashed mother woman was not so good. That was difficult. In, but, and later in life, I realized uh, the, uh, she was a difficult mother for me, there and not there. And she was, uh, had to find her way. She was, she could not build a uh, safe, safe frame for me. In the war, it was also uh, difficult. And uh, later in life, I realized uh, this fate of my mother and I acknowledge her fight to find a way even being smashed by the by the professor and therefore it was difficult for for her to stay in Essen in the, in the hometown and she went to Greece really? <laughs> and <laughs> recovered in Greece and at the time after the war the Greeks were uh, curious to learn, also some engineers and so uh, such people wanted to learn German. And therefore she was able to get her life uh, uh, basis in as a teacher for German in, uh, in, um, in Athens. And therefore I was several times in Athens and uh, have a little closeness to if it was for me a wonderful experience, this old Greece right? and the newer Greece. It was a, a very a live lively city at that time in the 60s, 70s and um, in the 70s more. Yeah. So actually yeah. what I hear, Ludwig, is that uh, your mother, what is her name, by the way? Anneliese. The name Anneliese. is Anneliese, yeah. Mm. Beautiful name as well. Yeah. So Anneliese was also 
in her own ways a pioneer. Yeah, she was uh, under very difficult con uh, conditions because on, at that time it was clear the men are the important beings on earth, not yeah. the woman. And this, it, it wasn't it brutal by my father and uh, others, and, but she was the lower, slightly inferior. And my mother, uh, my father said to me, my son, I have to say you an important thing. Only men can create important things. Uh, woman not, slightly inferior. That was the German, but I understood he, she is not right. I knew my mother. She was not slightly inferior. She was very intelligent and energetic. He had a very good energy right. so, to find their way. And actually in the legal sphere, which it, so your Annalise did not have just that to, find her own way to stand in or uh, supporting uh, her uh, studies, but also in a field that was dominated by males at the time. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. sphere. So mm -hmm. you would say that uh, uh, the value, that the quality that your mother represented for you was water. Was water? What was the best quality or the value that ah, yeah. Annalise inspired in you? Um, life energy. Life <laughs> Even energy. he had these difficulties. She had a, vit a good vitality and energy. And if it was not good in Essen, she went to Italy and then to Greece and then back to Germany and so on and find their, their way. But uh, this problem with this examen uh, that worked in her and therefore in, uh, in the, if she, when she was 60 years old, she wanted to finish study in Paris. <laughs> and went to Paris to study and made an exam there. But at that time, it was a little fantastic. It was not possible. Uh, but this is this energy. This is, uh, I have it from her. Yeah. Right. Uh, mm -hmm. And your father, what was the name of your father? The father, the name was Helmut. That's a very German name. She also studied... Uh, Juristerei, I don't, in English law, you also, he was an advocate. Mm -hmm. And he was uh, more, he was also, very, he both were very interested. No, in any way, narrow-minded. And that was a big gift for me. And they had books and books and books. <laughs> and there was a seller of books, um, in my uh, in the home, and um, I had access to this many books, and I could read. That was also very helpful for me. Uh, and if you are young, you you read with a big intensity. All all books are opening windows, right? and that wonderful uh, was was very good. From both sides, we were very interested. Mm. Right. And there was no shyness to uh, to read uh, to read Nietzsche or uh, to read even Plato <laughs> and so on, and so on. And now in my later life, I have uh, my my mother read books uh, uh, books from China and also from uh, Uncle Tom's Hut also from United States, the difficult books and so on. Uh, but uh, in my, there are now you can have read books by Audible. Uh, and I, uh, on my, when I'm bicycling through the landscape, I have this Audible 
uh, books and even Plato, Nietzsche, <laughs> Kant, and, uh, it's, uh, and Joseph Conrad and uh, Conrad and so on. And that is maybe also this um, quality uh, by my mother to read uh, for the little boy. And I was sitting there and hearing and uh, painting. Oh. Yeah, it was also, there were very good rooms, even the context of war and post war time was 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 difficult, but there were uh, quiet uh, quiet rooms on connected rooms also mm -hmm. right so uh, Helmut being a little bit uh, narrow minded but also open to the big spirits and writers of the times and engaged in marriage with Annalise, who is not the type of woman that is easy to be controlled or suppressed. So what was their relationship? What could you repeat the question? What was the relationship between uh, uh, your mom and your dad in those years when you were young, a child? Yeah, that was. Um, I have to uh, uh, to uh, uh, to say another thing. There was a very helpful uh, person at that time. Uh, in bourgeois households, it was uh, the children were given to housemates or the housewives or so, and that was a wonderful person. The name was Elsa, and my mother understood this young woman is very helpful, but she was and she was not so good in motherhood. <laughs> Uh, she was good in adventures, but not in motherhood. And this Elsa, I had the Elsa as supporting uh, mother and continued this relationship also in uh, later life. And uh, the relationship of my mother, uh, father, mother, uh, parents was the, uh, uh, burdened by these war conditions and they could not find together after the war. And that meant my mother had a new relationship my father found a new and created a new family and best that was my chance there had i i had a supportive space in this new family and what that was uh, in the when i see back that was very important at eight years or yeah, seven years uh, i could e evolve i could find my way it was very, very important. Mm -hmm. How many, how old were you when uh, uh, they separated and uh, had their own difference? Uh, nine years old or uh, ten years old. And I had to realize they separate. It was a process. Yes. And there was also the, the beginning of the new partnerships and so on. Mm -hmm. And were there any brothers or sisters? Yeah, as from my mother's side, a half-sister. And from my father's side, three half-brothers. And all there, the good thing was uh, the, the, the my father and mother estimated each other. They d did not fight each other. And uh, that was very good. The relationship also with this half sister and half brothers is good and so on. Uh, the, the, there was no destructive fight. That was very important. I could respect that they go different ways. Mm -hmm. I could accept it. Mm -hmm. And your paternal uh, grandparents, uh, do you remember? Can you bring us some? Uh, yeah, I only uh, the men of my my father uh, was a very uh, famous or a well known industrial leader of a syndicate that is uh, the whole 
um, coals or from the from from the industry um, in in Essen were uh, uh, sell by a syndicate, coal and coal syndicate. That was an industrial industrial management, and at that time the leader of such an in syndicate had a very high position. And they lived in a big villa and so on. Um, that was before the war. And during the war, there was a smaller villa. <laughs> and partly I was also by this grandfather. And uh, this grandfather was an adored, um, adored person, has a very high social standard. My father had the medium social <laughs> standard. <laughs> And I had the like in the Thomas Mann Buddenbrooks I, I had the impression I was a final disaster after this big, uh, big man, medium man, and a disaster man. And I had therefore I had to create my own way. That is my also the pioneer. It was not possible for me. Uh, to go the way of the grandfather. It was other time, the syndicate was passed by or so. And maybe it is uh, uh, also a way uh, as a grandfather was outside directed in his activities. My father was interested in just it, how can you regulate the life situations in a balance? And I was more introspective, how find a balance in my inner uh, sides. So, so you could see it in this way. Mm -hmm. Right. But all these, you know, so, uh, uh, the, 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 all these persons were trusting each other. Each other. Also my grandfather trusted my son, my father trusted me, I trusted my father, and so on. Uh, that was also a good background yeah, for my self uh, or self-spirit. Yeah. And, and mm. I see that for your father, the value he served was justice. Eh? Uh, for your grandfather, what uh, would you say is was uh, the value that he served all his life? Yeah, he was. Uh, the people said uh, some of these industrial industrial leaders were power men, mm -hmm. but he was had the uh, almost seen as an mediating. His quality was the ability to mediate. Mm. And maybe that is a good, uh, a good route right. mm, for me. Mm. And the I'm also a mediator. Mm. My father also. Also, that is quality of grandfather, father, and son. Right. I'm also not fighting, but more mediating. Mm. Or connecting? Connecting, yeah. Mm. And your grandmothers, what can you bring to us from the part of your the, uh, I did not, uh, they died before my birth. I only know them by stories or so. Yeah. Therefore, I cannot say so much about them. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, as a child now, uh, what uh, is one or more stories you would like to share with us about the way you experienced your childhood in Essen? Mm -hmm. <clears throat> um, uh, for the, because all the adults were engaged in their life problems, how to survive in a, uh, under war conditions. Therefore, that meant that the children had much freedom. They could do what they wanted. And we, little, we lived in little crowds of 
boys and girls and so and uh, could play could play much space for to play that was good and the, there was a support and um yeah, this free is in spite of the difficult conditions, there was for children a free space in, in, in this under, uh, under this conditions in Essen or so. Right? But uh, I always ask myself in later life what is, what was the, what was, the, what had these conditions of war in me? And just uh, some weeks ago, I re realized it was a certain tension or the atmosphere of stress. All where it is, was not quiet. If the bombing was always danger, all adults were in, in a st survival stress and the children lived in an atmosphere of survival stress. And I realized um, uh, this survival stress <laughs> was in me when uh, through my life. Mm -hmm. And um, uh, this was uh, one uh, not, so, not so good like this. Uh, and that, uh, that as a child, the child had, children had to function. There was no, no time to, to play with the adults or so. The, the children had to function. That was a narrow a narrowness or the zone. Here, not um, as also all this realized later in life. As it is uh, the experience, and after in the war, in the lifetime, you can realize what happened. Yeah. And one strange thing, uh, um, I might, uh, by the situation that I, when I was 11, 12 years, there came these half brothers and half sister. And I observed the pregnancy as, and also the babyhoods of my sisters. And I saw when they were 20, uh, or uh, older, they repeated the problems of their baby time. Advice, as of my family situation, was a textbook on early development. And one um, story, yes, if you like stories. Yes. Uh, <laughs> um, in uh, when I was eleven, my mother was pregnant with the uh, with my half sister, and I saw her laying in a chair and with a very uh, friendly or a happy um, expression in their face. And then at this moment, it is strange, I thought if she had been, when she was pregnant with me in this same happy and quiet, and so that would be very good. And that uh, consoled me uh, and, um, and I often was uh, astonished that I, with 11, could make these conclusions from pregnancy with my, with my half-sister to my pregnancy and, uh, and so on. Also, if you are 11, you, yes, you are uh, intelligent. You have your, the intelligence. You have not the life experience, but the, the intelligence to observe, you have it with 11 years. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You said that if uh, your mom were that uh, happy in that uh, nice mood, uh, as mm -hmm. you observed here, that would be a consolation for you. Right. Yeah. Think. Why did you think that? Uh, um, did you feel it was a little bit not that happy at the time? I had no doubts. I was only very content that she was so happy <laughs> in this happy mood. Was nicht thirty years later, I. Uh, 
a cousin from me told me that my mother was horrified by being pregnant. Really? Because, um, 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 and therefore it's also an ambivalence. She had this horrified, that was not her, uh, her will at the beginning, but later on she was happy to have a son. That is, uh, both sides were there. Mm -hmm. And, yeah. Yeah. So it was uh, this uh, focus on uh, her own uh, life and being a little bit uh, distant, uh, as uh, you had, uh, thanks God, uh, in quotation marks, uh, supportive environment at the time. Yeah, yeah. At the same time, it is the war and uh, all of the stress and the survival uh, anxiety of the time. And uh, then uh, the discovery that uh, she was not uh, so happy with the news of pregnancy. So when was it, uh, Ludwig, that you connected with your uh, decision, inclination to focus on uh, mental health or psychology and uh, go this way. Mm. What were the traits that uh, you can now spot in your early childhood adolescence uh, that uh, guided you there? Yeah, that was a clearing process uh, before the end of the school time. I reflected what I could study. And I was gifted in mathematics and physics and was also interested in, in uh, natural science. I read books about and, and so on. And um, But... Um, the other point was I had this complicated separation, parents and difficult uh, family situation. And the most important would be to clear this. And therefore I came to, 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 the, con to the conclusion, I have to study uh, psychology. And then I went to Munich and studied psychology. And at that time, if you studied psychology, you could not, as a psychologist, uh, be psychotherapists. That was my aim, because the uh, legacy to heal was only the doctors, the medical doctors at that time. And therefore, they said me, you have to study medicine. And uh, I, I had to re-accept this, and therefore I started medicine, parallel psychology, and uh, because that was so uh, a little too much, and my father was ill, and so uh, there were no no not enough mon not enough money for this. I studied only as uh, I finished my medicine, medical study in Munich and in Essen and in Göttingen. And um, then uh, after this uh, medical study, I uh, started a, uh, training in psychoanalysis in Göttingen. That is a little town in Northern, uh, university town in Northern Germany. What is the time, the year in terms yeah. of time? Uh, what time of the, uh, what year is it now when uh, you are a student or finishing the medic medicine and psychology? I, uh, also I uh, ended my school time in 59 and then I studied psychology and medicine and I, I think 68 or so this was finished. And then I started the psychoanalytic training, and this was finished in 75. Also slow motion, a little slow motion. Yeah. Uh, but uh, it was a good, a good time. It had, I had, the, and there, this is also an aspect, there were no financial problems in the family. 
and there was a security. May others had to survive to the survival conditions also. I could make these studies also, and I had the financial support by the by my father to do this. That was good, and also I I uh, he had the uh, that this psychotherapy training, but it was um, a little strange for him. Because at that time, psycho uh, Germans, German men had no psychological conflicts. <laughs> uh, they were honest and made had, or they made their duties, and so no conflicts. <laughs> and uh, I remember when he often said, "I made the training analysis," and that was very strange for him that his. Son should be make a training, and then said he always, "Must that be? Must that be?" And then I said, "It must be," and then he accepted this. So it was a good relationship, tolerating, tolerating. Mm -hmm. And in those years, fifties, sixties. In Germany, I think uh, there was a strong uh, current, a strong uh, uh, psychoanalytic uh, uh, environment, or wasn't it? Yeah. Uh, also the, yeah. Also the psychoanal all German institutions were corrupted by the contact to the Nazis. Um, all the doctors were members of the uh, party all professors had were corrupted by this time and psychoanalysis was not corrupted and that was a, uh, as a, and, and that freud had a, and all the freud other psychoanalysts had a great big integrity and that was convincing to follow their uh, what uh, to follow them what they had to say that was uh, uh, on after the war. It was a revival uh, of psychoanalysis in, in Germany, and the country that uh, that it own, not only the cities was destroyed, the whole cult culture was destroyed, and nobody wanted to. Nobody liked the Germans. Germans were horrible persons. But this psychoanalytical space, uh, you could trust, mm -hmm. and uh, it offered the opportunity to reflect all these uh, society disasters that lay behind. And my my generation is the skeptical generation, <laughs> also my. Uh, at the times of my parents, they had the hope that the communism or the socialism could uh, save the world. But for me, it was clear there is no religious things like this, like these ide ideologicals could not save the world. But you had to, to uh, create uh, order to... Uh, support your humanity. The, um, also, the uh, what we call in German, also the the Gleichberechtigung between woman and a man. My experience: the German man made disasters, created disasters, uh, uh, and the woman hold the line of life. My mother, the aunts, the sisters of my father, and so I survived by woman, not by the great victories or the defeats of my father or the fightings of men. That was the men area was uh, defeated, and therefore I had uh, I saw the the power of woman. And uh, I, I realized the unjust against my mother and uh, how she tried to find her way and so. Also, uh, uh, therefore, this um, new beginning, the feeling you have to begin 
to make a new beginning. And this is also good uh, for uh, to be uh, to become a pioneer, yes. <laughs> new beginning. Right? And then I found uh, prenatal psychology. That was really a new a new beginning. It right. was very strange when I was about fifty, thirty years or forty five years. I see me on a strand in Denmark in the summertime. We went family with to Denmark with a strand. And I thought, was that all? I had done my duty. I had become a doctor. I became a psychoanalyst and training analyst and all was done. What else could be done? Mm -hmm. And then I heard um, a lecture of a, at that time, very famous um, psychiatrist, a guy, Teano Benedetti. I think maybe some of you, or it's, also he was really a great man. And he reported in a lecture in Freiburg, I, where I was, um, about a patient, a woman, a young woman who was searching for her brother, but she had no brother. And this Gaetano, Gaetano Benedetti said, maybe pre birth, before the birth, she had a brother and she uh, uh, read the, the papers of birth and reports and there was a fetus papyratius, also uh, she had before a brother and it was in her ideas that, and uh, the psych psychiatrist said she is crazy, there is no brother. And Guy did, Gaetano Benedetti, but before there was a brother. And I was enthusiastic about this <laughs> insight and went back to Heidelberg and looked in my bookshelf and saw there are 10 books about prenatal psychology. But I had not realized I bought them intuitively. And by this speech of, or the lecture of Gaetano, that was the starting point, the beginning. So actually Gaetano was uh, the first inspirator who ignited the flame in you. Yeah, and there was um, uh, one thing before uh, my psychoanalytic teacher in Göttingen was a man, um, Werner Schwider. All these men are not known today, but at that time, she, he was very convincing in his way. And I made a lecture and reported there was a very crazy man in old psychoanalyst named Otto Rang. And he had the, uh, said that the birth is, is, is experienced by all of us. And he made a big laughter. What a crazy idea. And I remember I looked at him and understood you are not right. You are laughing about a thing you don't understand. And maybe this uh, coming together uh, of some ideas or the inspirations. And therefore I was ripe for the insight of uh, it, it was growing in the background, but the Gaetano Benedetti, that was clear for me. And then uh, I saw uh, a time I read this rank book, birth, Trauma of Birth, and I realized that before the war in the early psychoanalytic, that was a bright uh, 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 range of themes they had, also birth, pre-birth and so on. And um, I saw in every generation of the psychoanalytic history, there were some psychoanalysts who hold this rank line. And, uh, but it uh, rank emigrated to United States and was then uh, a father of uh, humanistic uh, 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 psychology and then the, the development of research went on in the United States uh, by Arthur Janov, by Carlton Terry later, <laughs> William Emerson, 
uh, Stanislav Grof and so that was not possible in in Germany. Germany was uh, occupied by recovering from the war, war disaster, right? And but it came back to Europe by Carlton, by uh, William Emerson and others, right? and there was a. a background line also in Germany by this Graber uh, who had written a book, The Ambivalence of Child, Childs, in tw also 24, and immigrated to Switzerland and created their little group around, uh, psy uh, around um, uh, prenatal psychology. And they created 71, this ISPPM. And then it went. This went back to uh, to United States or Canada by Thomas Verney, who created eighty one the uh, APA. Uh, uh, and this is a strange thing that the two Jewish persons, Thomas Verney from Bratislava, and also Peter Freiberg, a Jewish person from. Uh, from Bratislava, and they have been in the same school. And the first uh, first conferences of prenatal psychology happened in the seventies, and Verney visited it by connected by his old friend Peter Freiberg, and then created the American uh, uh, APA on. Uh, Maybe for Jewish people in that time, uh, 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 in life danger, and so that was also necessary to make a new beginning. Right. right? And then focusing, what is the new beginning in my life? <laughs> I, I am the new beginning in my existence. Or so, And I have to, to catch it and uh, to realize the new beginning in my life and so on. That is all the focus of prenatal psychology as a psychology of new beginning. <laughs> and yeah. you also was uh, like, the uh, you had this all this uh, wonderful engagement. You collected all uh, prenatal psychologists in your book, uh, primal book, yes. and you served... Um, uh, it is was um, like a Bible, the volume like a Bible. It was two kilos all around, <laughs> and uh, you you had this book at the conference in Athens and gave some of these books, uh, like Bibles, Bibles of psychology, and all were presented. All the persons that I mentioned were were, were there, ne? and you had collected them. Uh, what was your inspiration to do this? Yes, energy. This uh, it was. You was always a great worker. Yeah, more than it's all awesome. others. You are the biggest power woman in this field. No? Uh, I created that a thousand pages. It was a thousand pages. Yeah, unglaublich. Yes, and it was uh, the. Uh, I created that when I started teaching it in the Capodistrian University in 2004. So I prepared it for the students at that time. And it was the result of my big appreciation for all the people who had uh, uh, walked the, the path. So but going back to you, Ludwig, mm -hmm. uh, you... Uh, heard Gaetano, then you went to your bookshelves, you discovered a dozen books you had intuitively chosen and bought, you started writing, you connected with the people, what, uh, what, when was it that you actually said, that's my path and I will be part of this current, of this uh, school of thought. <clears throat> yeah, I, I was well trained in psychoanalysis and all had the, 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 the knowledge to see that in every generation there was um, 
such uh, 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 some people had this focus. Uh, and uh, I created a little book, uh, Prenatal Psychology as a Basic Theme in Psychoanalysis. Mm -hmm. And uh, that was the big gong in my... <laughs> and I sent, I made a private pre uh, press of this book and sent it to all uh, professors in Germany, uh, Psych all psychosomatic and psychotherapy professors. And I think they all put it at once in the basket <laughs> as a no reply on this basic theme. And um, only one did, did it not. And that was uh, Sepp Schindler in Salzburg. They had at the university in the continuity of Graber created an interest in prenatal psychology. And uh, this Seb Schindler said, that's wonderful that we have some uh, psychologist who is interested in this. And said, is sent this book to Peter Freiburg, who was just organizing the uh, conference in Bad Gastein, uh, 89, 86, 86. And uh, I was invited. There was a call from Stockholm <laughs> to... Heidelberg Ziegelhausen. I was a small psychotherapist. I was invited by Peter Freiberg um, to, um, to the conference in Bad Gastein. And uh, there I made a presentation um, about a special theme. I had discovered um, the pictures of the hysteric women that were presented in Paris in the university. I remember not the name. Also Freud visited, made a visit to Paris and there were these hysteric women were shown in the, in the lecture. And the, the, I had the drawings of this and I could uh, describe that these were birth movements. Mm. The hysteric one was a birth movement. And I made a presentation of it. And that time was an ankle of uh, Freud. Ernest Freud was present at this conference. And after my presentation, he came to me and supported me and adored this wonderful presentation. And that was a big um, encouragement for me. And then what I not realized, this 86 conference was on the scientific level, a big um, event. But on the financial background, <laughs> it was a disaster. And uh, Peter Freiberg asked me to be member of the board. And I said, I have six children. I am not able to be a member of the board. And next day, he said, uh, oh, now we say welcome to the new member, Ludwig Janus, in our board. And uh, then I uh, agreed. And then we had to manage the financial disaster. And that was a great work and uh, how to do this. And how to do this? One medium was to make conferences in Heidelberg and in the Black Eagle, the Lock Hotel was the Black Eagle in German, Der Schwarze Adler, that was in a little rural uh, restaurant and hotel. And there uh, made, I made the conferences and, and made it so cheap, it was so cheap that I earned every conference 6,000 marks. And I could send these 6,000 marks at that time to Peter Freiberg in Stockholm that he could manage this financial uh, disaster. That was the reason uh, uh, for these conferences. And there was a big continuity over 20 years in these conferences. And it was very important for ISPPM to have these yearly conferences and Heidelberg was a center of exchange and 95 we made a big 
big um, conference in uh, in Heidelberg and had conferences in uh, also the the Peter Freiberg was uh, had the big ability to to get uh, relations to to found friends or so and therefore we had a conference in Jerusalem in uh, in uh, in Poland in Krakow and in London and uh, I accompanied all these conferences the president was Peter Freiberg the next con president was Rudi Rudi Klimek and the next president should be um, Derek Gupta who was in London and I remember that was a, a, a hippie, hippie like atmosphere in the ISPPM. I remember a talk between Freiberg, Klimek, uh, and Zikella uh, conquering the English, uh, the Angli Anglo Saxon world. <laughs> Man hatte das Gefühl, we, wir bringen das Licht, we bring the light in the Anglo-Saxon world. And that was the conference in London. And there was a conference also in, uh, nicht in Sizilien, in, uh, Cors nicht in Corsica, Sardinien, in Sardinia. Also it was a big activity, a conference in Australia, in Sydney and so. And we had the energy to fly <laughs> around the world to bring the light of uh, prenatal psychology to Sydney and so on. Also that was, uh, and all by all these activities, I became, there was no other person to do it, <laughs> then uh, I became president of ISPPM. And uh, yeah, it was at what time, maybe at that time, we also connected with you or with Reese or with with the Mediterranean uh, Society of Prenatal Psychology, no? Yes, mm. right. Yeah, so going back to uh, Peter Freiberg, who unfortunately uh, is not with us anymore, but uh, he was a very strong figure, a very important figure, uh, always working his best, uh, having uh, the journals, uh, uh, having his uh, professorship, uh, and all of this uh, volunteer work. Uh, what do you remember you have uh, appreciated most in uh, him, and which uh, you, um, which made you be attracted to this work, stay with? Uh, him, work with him, and develop. What do you remember of him? As, uh... We had, the, he was, uh, he came from Czechoslovakia and they had this uh, change in, in the government and had to fly. And he went to Switzerland and then to Sweden and he had the academic, he was uh, obstetrician gynecologist, child psychiatrist, and also a psychoimmunologist. Also he was an expert in different academic fields and international societies. And therefore the group of psychotherapists and prenatal psychologists was very small. And he... Uh, brought on the international, brought this uh, small group on this international level, also making conferences in, in different countries and creating uh, this journal, International Journal of Prenatal and Perinatal Psychology. He made uh, change the ISPPM as a little group of psychoanalysts to the Interdisciplinary Society, uh, ISPPM. But um yeah and uh, he was uh, also enthusiastic in this things and and he had the ability to contact also if you see in the members board members uh, in the old ISPPM journal that will be digitalized by uh, and put in the internet uh, uh 
and uh, it is a treasure of of works and so on but the the international board normally of a scientific journal has 12 members he had 80 members or so also from all all over he was in a certain way global like you <laughs> also this broad range and everybody is born that is a world theme not not only a local for local small groups it is a theme of for all human beings and he had this growed uh, plans and a very deep humanity as he was a very emotional um, uh, supporting um, giving you a, uh, a human very human very yeah. emotional mm -hmm. as that was highly intelligent highly connected but very modest and human and related no? right really a, a big, big human being <laughs> Yeah. But uh, always with plans, that was always mission impossible. <laughs> and if there was anywhere a mission impossible, to, he wanted to do it. But actually, the, the most uh, biggest problem of this mission impossible was to create a um, prenatal psychology society in England. Because the, the English people are in a very eccentric way, individualistic. And he several, he won several uh, trials to create an, um, a society in England. And all was a disaster. It was very strange. Um, uh, but uh, it, even nowadays, there's no society they are unable to create. A society. Uh, 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 Thomas Verney made it in the United States or in Canada, but in, in England it's nothing, only individuals. Terence Dowling, Simon House, and uh, Frank Lake, and so on, only persons, right? no society. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but who mm -hmm. knows? He put the seeds, we may see it in the next uh, years. Who knows? And uh, what is important is that Peter has uh, shown to all of us that there is no mission impossible. Everything is possible. And yeah, you will show it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so you you uh, see the, you see uh, what we over years we were in uh, Italy together, you and uh, uh, Gabriella Ferrari and some others wanted to create um, a, a training uh, plan and so over years. And it, at that time, it was not able to be called the resistances in the society were so big. And they are in the moment are big. As we hear in, in uh, Heidelberg, in the, my, my psychoanalytic groups, after 30 years, of influencing them or the bringing them information they have they made a uh, abstimmung in uh, a voting process in one institute and the the, uh, the the men in this institute prenatal psychology has nothing to do with psychoanalysis and they are nothing seems in our ed ed trainings uh, our therapies and that is a disaster and there is a big journal in your uh, psyche. They also, it is impossible to bring prenatal and perinatal aspects in the, re, uh, in, the uh, in the psychoanalytic field. That would mean a breakdown of the whole uh, psychoanalytic universe. Very strange, very strange. No? Yeah. yeah. It is this, this paradox. Yeah. Uh, when you wanted to continue uh, to, to make it uh, stay, then you uh, um, lose the opportunity of expansion and creation and development. And uh, this is sometimes it's so uh, paradoxical to see, but uh, it is what it is and the time proves uh, what uh, can be done, what truth 
can be. And uh, now you mentioned Gabriella Ferrari, another wonderful woman, unfortunately yeah. not living with us. And you previously you spoke about uh, Lucio. Um, Zichella, uh, 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 another beautiful person that worked with uh, with us, and uh, Frank Lake, of course, and Simon House, and all of this, and we have Matthew Appleton now in England. The, some figures that may go on. Uh, going back to the inspirators. Uh, when was it that you connected with the psychohistorians? Because uh, we know that uh, you represent, uh, you have worked deeply in the psychohistorian uh, mm. um, aspect. When did you mm. meet? Who inspired you? Was it uh, Lloyd de Moss himself? Lloyd de Moss, yeah. Mm -hmm. Also, Lloyd de Moss had created this psychohistory society in New York and uh, he brought together uh, prenatal uh, aspects and as a background for the living in the society and at, uh, his, the, his theme was the fetal drama. He saw the coming from, uh, from the prenatal area in the new world is a basic uh, experience and and with very difficult under under our conditions and um, his uh, and it is uh, reincinated in the in the in the wars and, and, and conflicts in societies and there was a little society also in in Germany and once he came to Heidelberg and held a, a day, a long lecture. I remember and there were 20 people at the, and I experienced him there. And he was starting to, 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 to speak in the morning at nine o'clock and at eight o'clock in the evening, he was also speaking. And uh, because it was this enthusiasm of the people at that time, also, you coming from Athens to Parma or to the sittings, uh, Peter Freiberg coming from uh, from Stockholm to uh, often to Frankfurt and so and to Heidelberg and so. Also, the, the enthusiasm set forces free. That this uh, big exchange, no Zoom, no, only the bringing the uh, primate bodies by aeroplanes to the yeah. different cities. It was really uh, encouraging. And um, uh, what uh, was the question? The, yeah, as a, the, uh, the psycho historian. As a psycho historian. And I, I, I understood this is a great man, uh, this uh, Lloyd de Moos. And he was also... Uh, uh, Confronted, confronted with uh, big differences, but there was he was a, also a very human, very connected man, and I had the power, uh, the opportunity to go to the uh, conferences in New York, and um, uh, and uh, we there was, was a start in Berlin, and then we had a, the, the the Society for Prenatal for Psychohistoric Psychoisto in Germany was in Heidelberg and we made conferences every year and it is now in continuity. And we last, our last uh, book is Childhood is Political. Also, because the childhood conditions are reincinated by the adults. And Hitler was a traumatized, a beaten child. And his life motto was beat, beat, be child, schlagen, schlagen, schlagen. And Putin is the same. Traumatized parent under traumatizing conditions. And he has no, he is, that is like criminal persons. Criminal persons are not wanted, have violence, experience of violence, 
before birth and after birth, and they have no other models of life. And uh, this uh, became clear by this. And uh, but the society did not want these complicated messages. Also, I made a book with a Heidelberg journalist, uh, Unwanted Child Children. And to being unwanted and put in, there's this clear, the mother was in a traumatized condition and did not want this child. But she was forced by the father who had lost five brothers in war and was violated. And he wanted a child. And therefore he was an unwanted child, left alone and, and so on. Right. Saved by a teacher who would take this poor young boy uh, under her uh, protection and enabled him, therefore, uh, to, to develop his uh, left brain area. But under this left brain is the disaster of this experience, disaster, uh, World War II or experience of the mother and father. Uh, there, the Nazis planned the genocide of uh, the Russian population and made the genocide of the Leningrad population. And uh, uh, he is speaking and experience out of the echo room of the feelings of the mother. All what he says, we are bedroht by, uh, we live, live in the terror of the Nazis, was the feelings of his mother. And his child uh, soul, soul experience, he is against all reality. There is no Nazi problem in Ukraine. It's very crazy. Right? Yeah. And this is the traumatized uh, part of the population. Also the traumatization in our uh, uh, life history. But now we can reflect it and we can try to integrate it. But the whole society is not in the moment, not yet. No? Mm. Yes, but that this makes this work very significant because it is not just the, the fact that our prenatal early experiences, our primal years uh, are there in our childhood and the adulthood behind our health and our relationship or disease, but it is further than that, beyond that, it is a matter that touches the whole world, peace, uh, the uh, um, violence or peace of the whole world, because that's uh, reflected, repeated uh, in all aspects of life, not just personal life. Mm -hmm. And when did you, uh, Ludwig, when did you start connect with uh, Unorify and uh, uh, stand and then represent and teach uh, the bonding <coughs> analysis? Mm -hmm. Uh, I have to go a step back. The, the big event was this uh, conference 1986 in Bad Gastein. The title was Encounter with the Unborn. And I met all the psychological psychologists of that time were uh, assembled there, were there. All the Americans and from other countries. It was really a big event. And the book is uh, Encounter with the Unborn in German and in English. And the, also the, the German uh, presentation are in the German book, and there's also an English book. Uh, the English presentation there was this really a large conference. And there I met Terence Dowling. And Terence Dowling comes from the English tradition, Frank Lake was a, a big pioneer in, in England and his pupil from he is Simon House and also Terence Dowling. And uh, uh, Terence Dowling lived here and came to Germany and uh, I invited him to make lectures and try to, uh, to bring this 
he is a uh, he has a very uh, also he is a high gifted man something like a genius as he brings to get uh, the prenatal area and the cultural area mythical area and okay. say it is very clear that our myths paradise and so on are Uh, imaginations of our prenatal and perinatal experiences. And he made lectures here in Heidelberg and um, Terence Dowling made it clear all this is very, uh, these experiences are important. And what could be the consequence? And the consequence was uh, uh, made by Yenu, Rafa and Hidash that the consequence to support the mothers, pregnant mothers in their relation to their child. And uh, both were able to speak German and I invited them to hold lectures here in German, Germany and uh, trainings in the so-called bonding analysis. And we made it here over 10 years or yeah, more than 10 years and Uh, there were conference in Cologne uh, organized by Helga Blazi in June, middle June is the next conference there. And there are copies, uh, the books from these conferences. And Jenny um, uh, Rafa uh, made had, um, a frame how to support the pregnant mothers in their in the connect in the connection with with the child and this was also opening a window opening in a new uh, it was before it was incredible that it was possible to to observe this directly and now it was that it was his creation the pregnant mother is lying on the couch the bonding analysis is sitting Uh, at the side and encourages her to connect with her child and it is possible and then it is a dreamlike consciousness and dreamlike ex exchange but in this dreamlike are really really real emotions and sens sensations and every and over 10 years we made these um conferences and there's a website www.bindungsanalyse.de and made also trainings in Vienna. There's also a, a, a group bondinganalysis.at and Gerhard Schroth brought it to United States um, uh, Uh, also under under the frame name of uh, bonding analysis, and there is also a group. But a big background for all this development was uh, the courses on trainings of William Emerson, and the, they they happened in, in Switzerland. And Gerhard Schroth and me and others, Antonia Stulz Koller and others, were participants in these courses that also uh, over six years or so, maybe can't, can't say in the, yeah. uh, the in the second or the third course or the, that was all the, always a week. And um, Bütenhardt was the little hotel where this happened. And uh, uh, first beginning was with William Emerson and then Carlton. Uh, came and we had the experience with Carlton and Carlton created also a training center in in Taos in uh, in New Mexico and I was there and was a big and always a little enthusiastic <laughs> exchange <laughs> at at that time because um, we did not re uh, the the full extent of this new a realm of of human consciousness but were enthusiastic also i know uh, the story the um, in the Badgastein conference um, the men of the w, wvc or the toilette man 
I spoke with this man of the toilets in the conference center, and he said he has never seen such a hypomanic conference like this. Always were in a higher mood because they had the feeling of discovery, a new level of ex existence. And yes. it, I, I think it's like it's something like this. Right? Yes. And therefore, the big resistances and the book, Big Enthusiasm, the enthusiasm was bigger than the resistances. And yes. therefore, we are together today. <laughs> yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. Actually, uh, Hidas and uh, Rafai uh, introduced the, the first the primordial health advancement programs, uh, working with uh, the pregnant couples uh, back then, when mm. uh, uh, they understood exactly what uh, can support the younger generations uh, instead of healing after birth, uh, yeah. have supporting them before, even before conception, or at least during pregnancy. And William Emerson uh, doing all this excellent contribution as to healing the babies, the newborns during the first few months, not waiting for them to grow up mm. and uh, start uh, presenting symptomatology that will take them to mm. uh, the medical uh, world. So these people are really very, very uh, advanced in understanding. Mm. So um, what can you see from uh, the understanding you developed over these years? Of course, you have uh, uh, given us a lot uh, of uh, understandings, uh, but uh, if uh, you were asked uh, to put uh, this in uh, um, short sentences, uh, short messages, what did, what do you, uh, did you see develop as understandings from the time you were back in the 60s to now 2020s? <clears throat> Very easy question. <laughs> really? Uh, <laughs> yeah, it could be the next Wikipedia. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um. Also the, the f first things were uh, the understanding that the prenatal experience are important. Also in their problem, is, they were discovered, the importance were discovered by the problematic or the traumatic because the traumatic experience are present in later life as disturbances. The good prenatal experiences are present in having a, a good mood, enjoying life, courageous, and so on. But you go not with, if you are happy, you go not to the psychotherapist. <laughs> and therefore, the psychopaths have also to do with the persons with the, the disaster experiences. And, um, uh, Therefore, this is this pessimism in uh, or the melancholia in uh, psychoanalysis. Freud uh, heard the patients, gave a space to hear, to try to understand. But what the people, the patients had to report were anxiety, anxiety, guilt feelings, masochism, sadism, also a horror. Something like a hell was hidden in the in the in the souls, in the inner experience of good bourgeois uh, people in Vienna, high edu often highly educated, and uh, it was really a big problem. <laughs> and uh, he was not able to uh, understand. It was a, a melancholy in the psychoanalytic and uh, also in the so old society. And then uh, the Melanie Klein, uh, in, after his death, also mother could be a theme, but it was also the horrible mother. The 
horrible breastfeeding, the f uh, you are anxious, you are sheet sweet, uh, you feel terrorized by, by your early experiences. And then came Bion and speak, spoke about the uh, ur catastrophic. But it was the anxiety of coming closer to these uh, traumatic experiences. And, but not uh, the the uh, the um, these analysts sh were in a little sh you can say they were shy to really to go in the inner circle of early experiences that may be John, John Turner when uh, uh, also Groff also uh, uh, Janov in Germany Holweg they really opened a space to experience, not to sh to make shy looks on the inner problems like the psychoanalytics did, but go in the center and when, go in the re-experiences. And that creates, the, you, you are survived all these difficult situations in the prenatal, pre-verbal uh, experiences. And was, that was a promise that could be healing, these uh, regressive therapies could be healing. But um, I, I think we are always uh, on the way. I don't, I don't, therefore, I'm very thankful well, I don't, on, uh, um, William Emerson was something like <laughs> an open door opening, but um, he was. Uh, but I think Carlton and also Ray Castellino were able to bring a little order in this uh, chaotic, emotionally early emotionality, and accompany a little more. And uh, I think we are on the way to do this. And we have also, uh, we, also we are uh, some, uh, weak by these resistances, always these resistances. Ich meine, im Deutschen das Wort bremsen, could someone help me? Also, they, uh, there was a, a breaking, a breaking uh, bremsen. We could um, far ahead, if we were not, we, we were only only fighting against these is resistances, yes. and therefore we had very very few resources to do all these conferences and uh, and all this. We did much, but uh, if we had more support from the society, uh, we had would we would be we, we would be far ahead. Therefore, these global conferences, it's your energy that creates this conference. It's, uh, we are living in the area of pioneers. No? Yeah. Because of the, we cannot create stable, uh, uh, stable societies because of the, the weakening influences of the society. Maybe APA in the moment, is, she makes us strong because it's led today by, by a woman. Uh, and they try to create a, a frame. And now you have to pay five lectures of William Emmers. You have to pay two thousand two two hundred seventy five uh, dollars. Also, it's a new area, maybe for the global conference. <laughs> uh, it, in earlier times, it was also idealism. All was done by idealism. No, no money. Yeah, maybe in, this may be changed in the future. Uh, well, I think uh, that uh, this may not change. The idealism is still there. It's just uh, that uh, the academic world more and more often now understand that there is a lot over there. So they they have to open up and start doing. And we are in a very, very important th threshold at the moment. So yeah. we'll, we'll be asked to make important decisions as to what 
we would like to see in the future. Peace, conflict, unity, health, violence, all these are things that we will um, deal with in uh, this part of, the, of uh, this time. So, uh, what we, uh, or uh, the messages, would be the message that you would like to send uh, to the young uh, professionals in the field now? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think one big, bigger insi insight that is important is that we... Uh, we are born, born unripe. Our brain, we, uh, as we, our pregnancy should be, uh, sh the, uh, sorry, uh, the big elephant has 21 uh, months of pregnancy. And then he is born as a young child, but with ripe neurology. He is able to stand on his foot. He is able to or orientate. But because of the upright position, it was necessary to have a, a, a closed pelvis because it was otherwise it would not be to, to, to walk upright. And therefore, the woman could not open the, the pelvis to, to let the uh, uh, child outside. And therefore, the solution that was a compromise was to shorten the pregnancy from 21 months to nine months. And therefore, in the first year of life, the so-called extrauterine life, you are functioning on a midbrain, stump brain, midbrain limbic system level of consciousness. You are living in a dreamlike consciousness. That's also discovered in the bonding analysis in the exchange of mother with child that is this dreamlike consciousness and this dreamlike consciousness <clears throat> is functioning in the background in the, our whole life that is the background of animistic experience of um, uh, of uh, fantasy of myths and so on and myths of we have been and in these myths are reality. Myths of paradise is the reality of the real uh, living in the other world, in the prenatal world, and therefore the pre uh, the prenatal psychology is a medium and a tool to understand human mentality in a new, broader way. Nowadays, we have different systems. One is for religion, one is for, for mythology, one is for prenatal psychology, one is for, pre, pre, uh, uh, for, for doctors and so on. But we, we have to integrate. And that means that for the big child before birth in the first year of life, the parents are godlike figures. They can, but, and they are existential, existential meaning for the child. It is more than bonding. But because of the unripe precortical pre focus, the child is depending on the ripeness of the uh, responsiveness of the mother. She is not able, uh, the little uh, infant is not able to manage his life. He cannot walk, he, he cannot organize, he cannot understand. He is in this dreamlike uh, manner of being and needs the protection. And society has to realize this and uh, to, uh, to support parents uh, to create a space for this dreaming, uh, dreamlike uh, children, then they come, uh, they come to themselves and ex explore themselves. We are not hanging on the fur of the the mother, but we are uh, uh, 
uh, we live in the emotionality and relatedness of the mothers and of father. And there in this relation, we come to ourselves, we experience this. And therefore, the early, early parent, parenthood is so existentially important. And in the moment, this is not seen in Russia, it's, it's not, in, not in any way seen. But also in France, they bring the, the little babies in the... Um, in the Kita in Germany, Kita oder in, uh, ich weiß nicht, in uh, uh, Betreuung. <laughs> uh, the baby is uh, supported in the, uh, nicht not in the kindergarten, but early parenthood guidance. Uh, so, no, also taken away from the mother that the mother can work. Yes. But the baby is not understand. I have to be in the, Uh, the, 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 what is the name for this early parenting system? Uh, also in Germany, Kita, Kindertagesstätte, Children's for uh, Child Observance or so. Also if the baby is not able to understand this, but she, she, the baby has the feeling something horrible is is uh, is happening and the so-called yellow wests in the in france crying mm -hmm. macron is uh, evil macron must, has to be away in germany macron, uh, merkel must back merkel uh, should be away merkel but it is baby feelings these are baby feelings and this had to be understood And the cruelty in the education in, in the families in Russia and also in, uh, in the, also in obsession, it, it is very cruel. And, uh, there, and therefore, this very cruel uh, behavior of the soldiers in, in Ukraine. And, um, and yeah, therefore, we have to. <laughs> to bring our knowledge in the society that this changes, right? that parenthood is the important and challenging thing in our life, not the weapons. <laughs> so, and it is very strange. The money of the society in the United States, 700 billion dollars every year in weapons. Why? And this only can change if we support mothers and fathers to be to take responsibility for themselves, for their relations, and for their children, or so on. Right. I think that is a very big message. Okay. Maybe we need the global conference to to explain it. And uh, to parents to now pregnant parents or young parents, what would you tell them? What is your message to them? Yeah, the first message, first, first, second, <laughs> first message, message, message uh, clear your life. Mm -hmm. Also, uh, don't fall in love and think that The partner will clear your life, clear yourself for yourself. Also what, uh, what, is, uh, what, what did my parents, what was my experience as a baby birth, maybe pre-birth, what has this for consequences? Clears it with this, maybe something like autoanalysis or so. Maybe today, the, uh, today, as in, my parents had no psychological reflections. Today, young people have this. It is we live in other time, but support this possibility to clear your life experience, and also for if you fell in love, it is <laughs> clear that it will make an exchange with your partner about his life. And then the partner has totally other conditions, and you have to uh, to uh, to an exchange about your life history. Other that would be 
first yeah. message. <laughs> Second message, um, if you are crazy, um, uh, you are angry about your partner, yeah? Don't uh, beat your partner, but uh, reflect what, uh, where this craziness uh, relates to any situation in your uh, childhood, mostly mother and father, mother and father. And what was the crazy, in what respect was the craziness with your, related to your father's or the mother's behavior? And then you get to clear what was the need as you were five children, five years old or four years or something. What is the need? And you want, it, want your friendly father or more contact. And then you go back to uh, the situation uh, in your real life. What could you do to change your life that there is more of this need? Yeah. Also what I now tell is the five movements of Robin Grill. I don't know, do you know him? Yes. Yes. Also I uh, ex um, recommend I see him as in the moment as one of the um, most simple um, uh, help to regulate your feelings inside in this process of five movements. The book he has written is Inner Child Journals, Inner Journeys, as Inner Child Journeys, $15. Yeah. Also, yet could could help in your life uh, 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 to uh, to clear your emotional relations. As it's, I think it's really a progress. And exactly. then, uh, real third third message: <laughs> realize that parenthood starts. Uh, much before the baby is born, not as English noblemen thought, childhood starts with 15 years or so. That was the first time they saw their children. Something like this strange Boris Johnson is from this able, this noble, uh, noble uh, upper class uh, level there in, in Germany, in, in England. They have no contact to their parents. They have cruel uh, early childhood, then they given in the internet, and they are strange persons, not really responsible, not trust, trustful, and so on. Also the, the education system should change in England, also in other countries also. It changes, but it should go more in the risk. Uh, also that, uh, that learning, a school should be an area of coming to oneself, to find oneself. What shall be my way in my life to develop is, also one third of education should be life learning. How I will, my, 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 my motherhood, my parenthood, my relations, all the knowledge, knowledge is there. But it is not mediated or not there, in, not much in uh, in the schools, and that was a big um, challenge of Gabriella Ferrari to bring this prenatal knowledge to the schools, and I think this is also a next step, and. Uh, if you have, you have cleared your life, if you have exchanged with your partner, then you can relate to your children in a new way. Then the little child 
is the challenge challenges your your if uh, the, the person you have been with five years or with five, uh, with four, three years and if you you have your clear feelings of the five year boy or the five year girl you can relate to the five year child you have, child you have and that is also a book by robin grill babies or the children uh, shows us what they feel as it's uh, to understand the children or not as in earlier times to regulate the children you have children to educate to the child has to do do this this is right this is wrong you have only to do uh, things right but uh, to give the child a, a chance of the self development right? Also, uh, many challenges. <laughs> many challenges. Uh, Ludwig, as yeah. we come to a, a conclusion, integrating all the experience of the, the past that you have experienced and uh, having learned the lessons of uh, these uh, 80 years of life, what do you think uh, uh, is the challenge for us now and what uh, uh, needs to be um, looked after so that we move smoothly to that state where we understand or make space for the younger generations to live healthier lives. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> I think the uh, <clears throat> also to bring our knowledge to the society, I think what you are doing, what ISPP tries to do and use these new, new opportunities of the internet, what we are doing now. As in earlier times, it was impossible to have, to to reach in such an easy way many peoples, many women and 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 men, and, uh, and that we use and develop this uh, this possibility as you do it, as APA does it, as ISPPM, and also me as a little psychotherapist. <laughs> make uh, seminar days uh, to mediate the prenatal knowledge to psychotherapists, to midwives, to uh, the obstetrician does not want to hear anything, but I will try that we try to develop our tools in these directions. And uh, in, uh, yeah, the, uh, that, that we do it. And um, maybe the, um, that we speak about prenatal psycholo psychology is not so um, helpful. Also, to speak about prenatal psychology uh, is good for people who have a, a certain understanding, but people who have for also even psychology is a little strange and looks in my secret <laughs> and prenatal psychology that looks in my baby and in my uterine <laughs> that's very strange and therefore uh, it may be helpful to speak uh, also that is my solution in the moment to a pregnancy pregnancy is accepted is real and we speak about the psychological dimension of pregnancy. Also, prenatal psychology is uh, like an invasion, opening the door, going through. Pregnancy, yes. Psychological, they, they, you can touch it. Also, maybe it is easier to speak about the psychology uh, of uh, pregnancy or only about pregnancy and, uh, and there should be we are saying, and at the university we have in Germany 
30 professors for gender research and no professorship for the psychology of pregnancy and birth. That is a disaster and uh, as a really bad. If you know uh, this uh, no knowingness of the obstetrician that they manip manipulate uh, pregnancy and uh, and uh, and, uh, and and birth by this cognitive system of male management, we we can do it. The woman cannot do it, or so. And this must change. And therefore, we need a professorship for um, for pregnancy and birth. And uh, maybe we. As we, use, we could should reflect this to use the word that mediates the message. <laughs> That's the idea. Mm -hmm. You speak but, about knowledge translation. Knowledge How? translation in in small portions, <laughs> the not the big message on a whole, but that immer all proving what can the other tolerate. Right. Eh? What uh, what uh, uh, makes him anxiety or so? Not anxiety, but s sensitive or so. Hmm. Sensitize different populations by translating using the right tools, the knowledge we have so that people and professionals or other populations can understand and make uh, uh, good use of it. Is mm. that what you, you mean? Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Right. So yeah. we could continue for uh, hours and hours. Uh, days, days, uh, yeah. months. <laughs> uh, well, we'll have the chance to do that. Uh, very soon uh, we'll have another opportunity to, in our program, authors talk, uh, to speak uh, again and learn uh, from your lead. Until then, I would like to thank you very much for all uh, the a uh, vitality, all the good energy, all the um, uh, good intentions you have brought and you are still bringing to the field and uh, the world. Mm -hmm.